Welcome to the lair of the Batty Boffin. Hi there Batty fans, welcome to another Batty Boffin Maths video on the periodic table. In this video we're talking about the group 7 elements down this side of the periodic table. Here's a quick recap of where they come. Now, in earlier videos, I talked a little bit about the, well, no, actually, I didn't talk a little bit. I talked a lot about all the electron structure of the various elements, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. There is another one at the bottom, but we don't tend to use that one because it's highly radioactive. Um, so I talked about the electron structure and all the bonding, covalent and ionic and all that kind of thing. So check out that one if you want to know here. Here we're talking about the tendencies as you go down the group. So all the elements in the group, of course, are quite similar to each other and they will react in very, very similar ways. Some are more reactive, some are less reactive, some are denser, some are less dense and so on like that. We're going to talk about the tendencies of this group. So we've got our elements, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. And you're probably going to need pencil and paper for this. If you could draw those along, and then we're going to talk about how the size changes as you go down the group, how keen they are to grab an extra electron, I'll talk a little bit about that later, their reactivity as you go down the group, their density, and then MP and BP, melting point and boiling point, how that changes. They're all kind of related. You do not have to learn every single one of these individually, because, for example, when you know that, you know that. When you know that, you know that. And you know that. So things all link together. I'll show you how. So first of all, grab yourself pencil and paper and copy down this, please. Right, let's have a talk about some of these. First one is very easy, the size. Fluorine is in period two. That means the second layer down on the periodic table, which means it has two shells of electrons. Chlorine is on the third layer down, so it has three shells of electrons. Fourth layer down, four shells, and fifth layer down, five shells. So as we go down, they get bigger. So let's fill that one in. As we go down the table, they get bigger. So they're physically bigger atoms. Yes, you see how it works? So fluorine is quite a small atom, iodine is quite a big atom. Now, we talked a little bit last time about the electron structure and how all of these have seven electrons in their outer shell. That's what makes them group seven elements. Of course, things want to have complete outer shells, particularly eight electrons in the outer shell is a very popular thing. That's very fashionable amongst the elements here. These have all got seven in the outer shell, so they're all keen to grab an extra electron, thus forming the negative ion. All of these form a one negative ion, so F minus, Cl minus, Br minus and I minus, one minus ions. How keen are they to grab it? Well, they've actually got different keennesses. keennesses. Is that a word? I'm not sure. If you think about it, fluorine, quite a small element. So that means the outer orbital, the outer shell, is quite close to the nucleus. The nucleus has a positive charge, the electrons have a negative charge. So they're quite strongly attracted to the nucleus. Iodine, on the other hand, the outer shell's quite a lot further away. So the electrons in there are not so strongly attracted to the centre because they're further away and the attraction diminishes. Like, like with magnets, you know, if you hold two magnets far apart, the attraction isn't so much as if you hold them close together. So the outer shell on iodine, where you're trying to attract that extra electron, is not so much attracted to the centre because they're further away. So here's the first pause for you. You've got this spare outer electron, and let's say there's a fluorine over here, so we're going, extra electron, yes, I want you. And so the iodine over here going, extra electron, yes, I want you. Which one is going to get the electron? Pause the video, have a think about that. The answer is the fluorine, because the outer electrons on the fluorine are closer to the nucleus and therefore more firmly attracted, more firmly stuck in there. So fluorine will get the electron if there's one going. And we're going to talk about that in another video, probably, because I don't think we'll have time in this one, about the displacement. These halogens can displace each other. And this is why fluorine will displace iodine out of things, because it'll grab those electrons. 
So, could you please draw an arrow going down? As you go down, how keen are they to grab spare electrons? Do they get keener as we go down or do they get less keen to grab a spare electron? You fill that in. Here it is. Did you get that? They're still keen to grab electrons, they're still reactive. Iodine is reactive, but it's not as reactive as fluorine. So, this tells you a lot about the next one. Since we know that fluorine is uber keen to grab spare electrons, what does this tell you about the reactivity? Again, as we go down the group, does the reactivity increase or does the reactivity decrease as we go down the group? Fill that one in. Well, since these ones down here are less keen to grab a spare electron, they must be less reactive. So as you go down the group, the reactivity decreases. Now, what about density? <clears throat> density is how much something weighs for a certain standard volume. It's to do with the amount of heaviness in it. And we can tell that by looking at the relative atomic masses of fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. How would you know that? Easy peasy. Look at the periodic table. OK, I'm just going to show you. Have a look at fluorine and iodine and look at the big numbers that are above them. Not the atomic numbers, not the nine for that one, the one above the nine. Here they come. So, for fluorine, we've got an atomic weight of 19. OK, that means that in its nucleus are 19 heavy things, protons and neutrons, 19 things that have got mass, 19 protons and neutrons. Iodine has, what is, oh, 127, is it? I think, I think iodine's 127, which means that's got 19 heavy things in it. That's got 127 heavy things in it. Basically, it's about six and a half times the mass. Now, it is bigger, it is a bigger atom. Now, it's got more rings on it, but it's a lot heavier. So, these ones are relatively light compared to these. So, using that information, what happens to the density as we go down the group? Pause the video and fill that in. Hopefully you should have worked out that as we go down the group, they get more dense. And we know that one because fluorine and chlorine are both gases. Bromine is a liquid at room temperature and iodine is crystalline solid at room temperature. Things that are solid generally are denser. Things that are gases are generally less dense. That's a pretty good rule. You occasionally get weird ones where ice, which is a solid, is actually less dense than water, which is a liquid. But that's a bit of an anomaly and a bit of a weird one. There'll be another Batty Boffin video on that because it's really interesting, actually. And the last one here, melting point and boiling point. These you can always tell by the state that something is in at room temperature. If something is a gas at room temperature, that means room temperature is above its boiling point. If something is a solid at room temperature, that means that room temperature is below its melting point. So using that information, can you work out do the melting points and boiling points increase or decrease as we go down the group? Fill that in now. As we go down the group, melting point and boiling point, by the way, they always go together. If things got increasing melting point, they've got an increasing boiling point as well. This one here, fluorine, must have quite a low boiling point because it's a gas. Iodine, on the other hand, must have a high boiling point because it isn't a gas. So as we go down the group, melting point and boiling point increase. So there you go, the tendencies as we go down the groups and the halogens. You don't have to learn every single one of these. What you need to learn is the tendencies. And as I've said, once you know 
their tendency, they get less keen to grab electrons. That means they are less reactive as you go down there. Okay? If they become denser, then that becomes, they mean their solids at the bottom, and that also means their melting point and boiling point increases. So these things are all linked. If you kind of learn how they link, that's much better than learning the individual facts, because then you've got some linkage and you know how they all join together, how they fit together. So that's enough about this kind of stuff on the halogens. In the next video, we'll be talking about some of their common um, reactions, including displacement reactions, which is all to do with their keenness to grab extra electrons. So we'll talk about displacements, uh, the formations of salts, and all that kind of thing. So I'll see you the next time, Batty fans. <laughs>